Thanks for tuning into the trade setup with Neeraj Shah. And frankly, we can end this trade setup in less than 30 seconds because of this one plate that will come up on your screen, the pole of poles. The various permutations and combinations and the pole of poles, NDTV pole of poles suggests 365 for the NDA versus 146 and 32 uh, for the INDI alliance and others, which effectively means that the markets will start off gap up and that's all you need to know. So thank you so much for joining in. <laughs> well, I'm just kidding. But frankly, I mean, that is really what mattered in the trade setup today, the pole of poles and the exit poles. And therefore, I'm shunning away the global piece of news and just focusing on what's happening here. Keep in mind that the US markets gave a good handover. Asia is looking okay. Dow Jones was positive, by the way. Asia is looking okay this morning, so not looking bad at all across the board. And the implied open as of 7.30 or 7.40 a.m. is 712 points for the Nifty. This tells you the story. Frankly, there's nothing else that matters. It's a rising tide that will carry all boats. Now, you know, all you needed was this exit poll, of course, which had to be marked, the, 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 which had to indicate what the market wanted to hear. But there is positive news all around beyond that as well. So. Uh, and uh, global markets are strong, crude prices are lower, which is a positive. The GDP numbers have surprised on the upside, even as the GVA numbers have been steady, not falling. So th that number is also okay. The gross GST collections have looked positive too, 10% higher, 1.73 lakh crores for the month of May. And the exit polls such as policy continuity. So it's positive cues all over for risk assets. The question is, can we do better than what this is suggesting? And I think that is what we'll ask our guests this morning. So the trade setup for the day, exit polls could drive a serious spate of short covering today. Remember, the FIs were net short. The long short ratio as of Friday was slumped to 12.87%. And sorry, I've written the term may change. I think it'll be forced to change. The long short ratio will be forced to change because all those shots will come scurrying for cover. The gap up that we're seeing will make all of these shots compulsory come for cover. Even in the next line, when you look at the call right up, right? Again, key levels. Why? Because 23,000 uh, sent call writing. That is where the largest call option was centered around. This too will be forced to change because I doubt that any call writer for the current month positioning will have the guts to carry on with his uh, short call position, uh, with the calls that they've written, they will come out and cover and therefore there'll be some exacerbated short covering. Normally, chasing gap ups is not a good idea. Today too, that might not be a good idea in a side of specific stocks, but I tell you, uh, there's a very high probability that because of so much of shorting in the system, that even this gap up will probably see further upsides over the course of the next few days as shorts will compulsorily have to come and cover. This is presuming, of course, that tomorrow the election verdict comes in in line with what the exit polls are suggesting. But with that assumption, uh, this is what I think will happen. Now, specific stocks, um, you know, uh, actually, one of the things, just look at what happened to some of the Adani Group stocks in, 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 in Friday's session. Uh, and a bit of a whiff came in into some of these stocks itself. And I think from among stocks to watch or pockets that you got to watch, you have to admit that the Adani Group stocks stand up right up there. Um, uh, policy continuity on infrastructure benefits um, the businesses that these guys are in, in addition to the LNTs and some of the others in a disproportionate fashion. And therefore, I'll watch out for them. Uh, watch out for uh, the Ultratech is not an Adani Group stock, of course, but the infrastructure fo focus really out there. Now, what about specific stocks to watch? Newsmakers today, Adani Ports will be in focus, has signed a 30-year deal to operate a terminal at Tanzania's Dar es Salaam port. Uh, I don't think, I, I mean, these stocks will anyway start off higher, but this is an added whiff of positive news for Adani Ports. Watch out for this one. Let's pull up the next one, Aurobindo Pharma. Companies now executed a pact with Merck Sharp. They're going to invest about 1,000 crores in the manufacturing facility. Pharmaceuticals may not be the top draw today, but watch out for Aurobindo nevertheless. Uh, there are some stocks on which there are negative news. They may or may not react negatively, but I should bring them to you. May production down 37% for NMDC, um, and, and May sales are also down 22%, so not the most positive news, but could react positively still because of the rising tide. Purvankara has a positive news flow to itself, has acquired 12.75 acre land parcel in Thane. The gross developable value of this is about 4,000 crores. This stock 
has tailwinds and fundamentally good positive news may react positively. Watch out for this one. In fact, I'm pretty sure will react positively. And Mahindra and Mahindra from the auto pack, I mean, of all the auto sales that have come out, this one stood out for me. Domestic PV sales up 31%. Even if you look at what Mahindra has done versus what Escorts has done, farm equipment sales are up 9% for m and versus Escorts fall of 6%. So people will clearly look at m and from a farm equipment perspective as doing one, as one which is having one better on its competitors as well. Even, I remember even in the month of April, uh, the numbers for m and were far better than escorts on the farm equipment side. So watch out for m and in the session today. Could be a key mover. Remember, recently a brokerage came out and hiked the target price to 3,000 as well. So watch out for this one as well. Now, speaking of uh, brokerages, let's tell you what brokerages are saying about election outcomes. So Jeffries is saying the cyclical upturn is underway in private capex, uh, and therefore watch out for those. The likely capex plays, uh, they like the capex plays from a longer term perspective. I think the names that they have mentioned, if I'm not wrong, are uh, real estate, industrials, and power. And they say private financials like HDFC Bank, Bajaj Finance, Indusind Bank, and Kotak Bank are trading at significant discounts. So therefore, that's one pocket that they certainly want to watch out for. In addition to that, just before we get to Motilal Osal, sorry, just one second. I'm just trying to see what they, they've said that the laggard large caps uh, could be good tactical place to watch out for. So yeah, uh, they also like lag, they like autos, which is Aisha Motor TVS. They like Coal India, ONGC, and Select Cement, which is ACC and Shri Cement. So watch out for those. Okay, Motilal Oswal, they have given areas to focus on stocks within that. So category, uh, cables and wires, stocks on the back of the election or the exit polls and therefore the election outcome, presumably, Polycab and KEI. EMS, Keynes, Surma SGS, Sign DLM. Railways, T-Tagar, Jupiter Wagons. Infrastructure, Aditya, uh, Adani Port and SEZ. So this is the Motilal Oswal way to play uh, the election outcome in, ca in case you're looking for that brokerage update as well. And last but not the least, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, actually just before we get to that, the other aspect why a lot of people like private financials is because when FIs come to cover, private financials right out there. And if you look at YTD, the difference between what private banks have done versus PSUs have done is quite crazy. Uh, so the number, by the way, viewers, the divergence, PSU bank index has returned 28%. Bank Nifty has returned 2%. Bank Nifty has a weightage of uh, 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 this thing, right? This year, Nifty Bank is just 1.43%, so nearly 2%. But the PSU Bank Index, 29.27%. Just shows how much private financials have been shunned and how those are the ones that could see some good focus going ahead. Lastly, some technicals and some stocks on which uh, technicals look okay as per some select chartists. Emami, price has crossed the resistance and is breaking out of a consolidation since 2015. I looked at the chart. The stock has had a peak and trough, but since 2015, it's been at this one line. It's now started to break out here. Watch out for Emami in the session today as well. Could be interesting, even though FMCG is not top of the draw. Grindwell Norton, last week had lifetime high weekly volumes and a price breakout. Watch out for this one. Watch out for Samvadhana Madarsan. It's increasing volumes and price momentum. Uh, keeps it in focus for today as well. So these are a few names that technical experts are talking about. But because frankly, it's a, it's a rising tide which will perk up all boats. You've got to be careful if you're a price trader and a very limited price trader about where you want to fish because some of the stocks after starting gap up could have a 2-3% fall as well before they rise again and your stop losses might get hit if you pray for that very short price momentum. But if not, uh, I think... Uh, the next two, three, four years could be tremendous for wealth creation in India if you bet on the India story. As somebody said, the one stock to bet on is actually India. Watch out for the markets over the course of the next few days, weeks, months, and years. And if you are unsure about what to do, an index fund might be a great strategy as well. At the very least, park yourself in index funds because the India story is alive and kicking. Thanks so much for tuning into the trade setup.